Cyberspace is the term that was coined by William Gibson in Neuromancer novel in 1984. He described a futuristic computer network people plugged into directly with their brains. Now the term cyberspace encompasses the internet and the World Wide Web in particular, the wired and wireless communications world in general. Thus, cyberspace includes chat rooms, blogs, ATMs, conference calls, texting, and more. When we say online, it means using a computer connected through a network to access information and services from another computer or information device while network is a communication system connecting two or more computers. The internet is the largest network. Internet is a worldwide computer network that links thousands of smaller networks. It links educational, commercial, nonprofit, and military entities, and also individuals. Originally, it was developed to share only text and numeric data. Through the web now also supports multimedia. Now, what is World Wide Web? The World Wide Web is the multimedia part of the Internet, an interconnected system of servers that supports specially formatted documents in multimedia form. It includes text, still images, moving images, and sound. It is responsible for the growth and popularity of the Internet. Let's have a quick history of the Internet. Long before the technology existed, Nikola Tesla toyed with the idea of a world wireless system in the early 1900s. Visionary thinkers like Paul Otlet and Vannevar Bush conceived the idea of mechanized, searchable storage systems of books and media in the 1930s and 1940s. In early 1960s, MIT's Joseph Carl Robnett Licklider popularized the idea of an intergalactic network of computers. Computer scientists developed the concept of packet switching, a method for effectively transmitting electronic data. In the late 1960s, the first workable prototype of the internet came with the creation of ARPANET. ARPANET means Advanced Research Projects Agency Network. On October 29, 1969, ARPANET delivered its first message, a node-to-node -node communication from one computer to another. It sends a login message from UCLA to Stanford. In the 1970s, Robert Kahn and Vinton Cerf developed TCPIP, a communications model that set standards for how data could be transmitted between multiple networks. ARPANET adapted TCPIP on January 1, 1983, and from there, researchers began to assemble the network of networks that became the Internet. From 1990, the online world then took on a more recognizable form when Tim Berners-Lee invented World Wide Web. This era introduces Internet of Things. The IoT is the concept of connecting any device to the Internet and to other connected devices. It is a giant network of connected things and people, all of which collect and share data about the way they are used and about the environment around them. Here are some examples of Internet of Things smart microwaves, which automatically took your food for the right length of time, self-driving cars, whose complex sensors detect objects in their path, to wearable fitness devices that measure your heart rate and the number of steps you've taken that day, then use that information to suggest exercise plans tailored for you. There are even connected footballs that can track how far and fast they are thrown and record those statistics via an app for future training purposes. Here's a scenario of IoT in your home. Imagine you wake up at 7 a.m. every day to go to work. Your alarm clock does the job of waking you just fine. That is until something goes wrong. Your train's canceled and you have to drive to work instead. The only problem is that it takes longer to drive and you would have needed to get up at 6.45 a.m. to avoid being late. Oh, and it's pouring with rain, so you'll need to drive slower than usual. Your IoT-enabled alarm clock would reset itself based on all these factors to ensure you get to work on time. It could recognize that your usual train is canceled, calculate the driving distance and travel time for your alternative route to work. Check the weather and factor in slower traveling speed because of heavy rain, and calculate when it needs to wake you up so you're not late. If it's super smart, 
it might even sync with your IoT-enabled coffee maker to ensure your morning caffeine's ready to go when you get up. IoT sensors consist of sensors connected to circuit boards such as Arduino Uno. The circuit boards can be programmed to measure carbon monoxide, temperature, vibration, and motion. What differentiates IoT sensors from simple sensors is that they can not only gather data at different physical environments, but also send data at the connected devices. The IoT sensors allow seamless control of data through automation, delivering actionable insights. They can be used by businesses for predictive maintenance, enhanced efficiency, and reduced costs. You might have heard cloud computing before. Cloud computing provides access to information, applications, communications, and storage over the internet. Before cloud computing, most computers ran software based locally. For example, to use a word processor, you might fire up the latest edition of Microsoft Word which you'd installed on your computer's hard disk. Prior to the cloud, you stored data locally too. Email documents, photos, and music all resided on your computer's hard disk or flash drive. With cloud computing, all that changes. You can use your browser to access word processing applications that run from the internet instead of software that you have installed on your local hard disk. You can use online applications to manage your email, create floor plans, produce presentations, and carry out a host of other activities. You can store your data in the cloud too, making it available no matter what computer you're using as long as it has an internet connection. Cloud computing services include infrastructure, platform, and application or software. Here are the cloud computing services. Infrastructure as a Service, or ES, a third party that provides highly automated and scalable IT infrastructure for storage, hosting, computing, networking, out of its own global data centers and only charge for what you use. So rather than owning assets like software licenses or on-premise servers, companies can flexibly rent resources according to their needs. Some examples are Amazon Web Services, or AWS, Cisco Metapod, Microsoft Azure, and Google Compute Engine, or GCE. ES are used by system admins. Another cloud computing service is called Platform as a Service, or PaaS. The idea is to provide all the basics of ES, as well as the tools and capabilities needed to develop and deploy applications securely. It should provide a developer with everything he needs to build and deploy an application. Some examples are Google App Engine, Heroku, and Windows Azure. Heroku is a cloud platform as a service supporting several programming languages. PaaS is commonly used by developers. The third cloud computing service is called Software as a Service or SaaS. This is most common for end customers. It is a piece of software that is hosted by a third party and can be accessed over the web normally just by logging in, and is generally charged on a subscription basis per user. This differs from the old model of buying and installing software on a machine or server manually. Some examples are Google apps like Gmail, Docs, and Drive, Dropbox, Evernote, and Cisco WebEx. Here are the references where information was taken. Congratulations! This is the last slide of our presentation.